One, two, three. <laughs> Welcome to the Mental Reps Podcast, featuring your host, Brian Wright. When it comes to social media, it is like such a crapshoot, you know? You never know how people are going to take what you post. But if you're sitting there worried about what everybody's thinking every time you post something, that's when you get in trouble. If everybody agrees with everything you say, then right. there's something you're not doing right. I guess this episode is radio personality and content creator, Dina Lang. Then you're way too vanilla and you're not making an impact one way or another. So you're either going to be someone's shot of whiskey or you're not. And that's the bottom line. So you can like work yourself up over it and you can second guess everything that you do and talk yourself out of doing some really funny shit, which I have done. I mean, I've been to that point where I'm like, that would be so funny. And I put the whole thing together and then I talk myself out of it. Mm -hmm. And it would have worked, it could have worked. And then somebody else is gonna go and do it and it could be huge for them and you're gonna kick yourself for it. This week's episode is sponsored by The Field Irish Pub and Eatery, a little piece of island in South Florida, as well as elite sanitizing services, keeping South Florida clean and in business. I would rather take the risk and take the hit lose the followers, whatever it is, be true to myself if I feel so strongly that something is funny or that something's gonna resonate. Now fade out that fresh ass beat and let's get this bitch on the road. Welcome to Mental Reps Podcast. I'm Brian Wright. How we doing fam? I hope you are happy and healthy and you're not flooding out right now. Like so many people in South Florida, it has just been insane down here with this rain tough times for a lot of folks so a special shout out to anybody who's listening while dealing with all this mess thank you so much to anybody out there listening watching sharing with your friends it just means the freaking world to me we keep growing every episode thanks to you uh please subscribe uh, to the youtube channel that's a big one right now i need to grow if you want to be super cool click that bell so you get a heads up every time uh, we post a new video i have an announcement I'm pretty pumped about. Very excited to uh, announce for the foreseeable future, which I guess is safe to say indefinitely. Uh, we are giving 50% of the proceeds from the podcast to an amazing uh, nonprofit called Neighbors for Neighbors. You can purchase that merch at mentalreps.net. They were uh, created back in 1992 after Hurricane Andrew just pummeled South Florida. And they did that with a mission to connect those in need with those who can help, which uh, and hit me pretty hard when I found that out because I know how they felt to a very small degree and how that feeling would motivate somebody to do something like this. My father was in local paper for being part of the first responders after Andrew, and I remember driving down to Homestead with him and seeing every leaf blown off every tree. I mean, there was zero wildlife, like no birds flying, not a roof to be seen. Every single house was just destroyed. And that level of helplessness I saw in those poor people's eyes was just heartbreaking, just like beyond words. So I appreciate that there are organizations like this out there who are ready to help when fate calls. They're prepared and coordinated, organized to get uh, help to those in need. And I want to help them in every way I can. They also work with locals like myself, 104.3 The Shark, CBS4, uh, My TV 33, and a lot of others to like organize campaigns, raise some money for these uh, important local causes. Like when I was on 104.3 The Shark, I talked every day about Ashley O's food fight. I love talking about that because they raised money to help pay off the Broward County Public School District lunch debt so kids could eat at school and their lunch would be taken care of. Oftentimes, that's the only meal those kids were getting. They have so many amazing causes like that. So now I'm happy to say that every time that you buy a Mental Reps t-shirt, a face mask, a magnet, or even if you just keep watching or listening uh, so we can get more money from sponsors, 50 cents of every dollar of profit we generate is going to Neighbors for Neighbors. And uh, Katie, they're incredible executive director, amazing woman now, buddy of mine. Uh, can't thank her enough to, for helping make this happen. All their infos at neighborsforneighbors.org. We have some really cool, incredibly fun events planned in the future. I can't wait to share it with you. I'd greatly appreciate if you go pick something up again at mentalreps.net. It's going to a great cause. My guest today is an old co-worker and a buddy of mine, Dina Lang. She's been in radio down here in South Florida for about two decades. She has a huge following on social media as well. She's what you'd call a uh, 
content creator or influencer, but I assure you she has earned that right. She's hilarious. Her handle is at it's Dina Lang. Uh, go check her out for yourself. She also has an amazing new company she co-founded called Emotional Support Threads, which uh, we talk about. EmotionalSupportThreads.com is where you can go for more info on them. I really love that company. Dean is one of the good ones. And uh, I know you guys are going to dig our conversation, so uh, I'll let her do all the talking. But first, pour me a cold one. Slap my ass and call me shy. South Florida's, I don't know why I did that, authentic Irish pub and eatery, The Field. It's uh, an official sponsor of MRP. Just go to thefieldfl.com, enter code word REPS20, and get 20% off your entire online order. Massive thank you to everyone who came out to MRP Live. You are all beautiful and cherished. Please keep coming. I have one that I'm working on for you. I hope I can announce uh, during the next episode. It's a good one. But the field, really, it is like a little piece of island right here in South Florida. The aesthetics of this place are so freaking money. The banyan tree right in the front, the creaking floors, and most importantly, in my opinion, the best staff you could possibly ask for. They got the full bars, amazing Guinness on tap, Smithix, the Jameson, Plums like wine. Plus, of course, authentic Irish-American cuisine, shepherd's pie, the corned beef, the cabbage, Irish, tato soup. But if you're uh, super picky, no excuses. They got steaks, chops, fresh seafood, vegan options, and oh yeah, live music, Tuesday through Sunday. Also, if you're staying in, no problem. Just go to thefieldfl.com again and enter code word REPS20 for 20% off your entire online order. Also, here's another great company run by amazing people. If you're looking for local sanitizing services here in South Florida, call ESS Elite Sanitizing Services. They're state licensed and insured, offering local sanitizing services, which kill 99.9% of all the bacteria and viruses, including COVID-19. They actually provided their services to the field. Again, super safe and clean. Uh, if you need to keep your property, employees, customers safe and virus free, let them help keep you in business, keep your employees working. They offer services for for schools, churches, medical facilities, offices, aircrafts, yachts, public transportation, restaurants, gyms, homes, vehicles, and a lot more. It's kind of like you're running them through a big Purell machine. And now they're offering free sanitizing to vehicles of all first responders and medical professionals, which I just think is like a really cool thing for them to do. So please give them a call, 1-800-763-4299. Visit them at EliteSanitize.com or email them at info at EliteSanitize.com. Elite Sanitizing Services keeping South Florida safe and in business. All right, now it's time for the fun part. I hope you dig my chat with Dina Lang. Welcome to Mental Reps Podcast. I'm joined by Dina Lang. What's up, Dina? How you doing, buddy? You got me, what's up? Ah, Thanks so for good. having me. So damn good to see you. Like it's just been so even if it's over Zoom, like this whole period, this last eight months has been insane. Yeah. I just sort of adopted this like, you know, this life of only having four people like in my uh, general vicinity that I talk to on a regular basis. And it's been crazy. How are you doing, man? I'm good. I'm like, I'm, I, I'm, I'm the same way. I became, I was already a hermit. <laughs> but I'm like the most introverted hermit that there ever was now. Um, it's a whole, like, I have to prepare to leave the house. And I never, it was never like that before. I always felt like I could live in the city. And I could just like move and shake and do whatever. And it's not a big deal. But now it's like the preparation. Do I have the mask? Do I have the hand sanitizer? Where am I even going? To Target and getting dressed is a hassle it's life is so friggin different now um so i just don't do anything i don't leave the house i don't do anything i tried to bake cookies last night with the easy cookie gun that i i was a sold. cookie gun yeah you like load the dough up and then you're supposed to be able to like pop out professional looking cookies <laughs> oh, and it okay. was the biggest failure ever <laughs> um so Things are pretty good. If yeah. you can't tell, things are great. <laughs> I know. This has just been like, I, I was at Target the other day too, and I was walking around. I see everybody wearing their masks and shit. And I remember that first week when I went to Publix and I saw everybody wearing masks, I was like, oh my God, it was mm -hmm. such an eerie feeling. And now how we've just 
come so like we're so used to it now and it's just been an insane year and not to kick it off on a, on a bummer but i was thinking of this the other day like we should be prepping for riptide right now like it's like that time of year where we should be having meetings with john about like who's doing stage announcements and shit no but there are hurricanes instead i know in November. Right? Uh, and what the hell i i was at my brother's yard and I, we got stuck his house got flooded and thankfully he had like a f-250 and he got us out of there but yeah like, ours I flooded, pull- but i don't go anywhere so i didn't really care we just looked outside <laughs> and we were like oh that sucks anyway right, we got waterfront property now that's cool right. mm-hmm. i was thinking like uh at riptide i haven't hung out with your hubby that much but i remember like being off stage and him and I just kind of like mildly bobbing our head while the rest of you were like dancing, like nobody was watching, but I like your hubby. Uh, I like the cut of his jib. He seems like a good man. How's he doing? He's good stuff. He's in the other room. I'm barricaded in in the bedroom, literally sitting on the floor. Um, That's where I get most of my work done. I Mm. hide (laughs) and I sit on the floor for comfort. And sometimes I rock in the fetal position and that's good too. And whatever gets you through the day. Yeah, it's it is what it is. And then he works in the closet uh, across the house. So everything we do is in small contained spaces, but um, he's traveling less, which is nice. So I don't have to really worry about him being out there and being exposed to all kinds of, you know, germs and stuff, which Mm -hmm. is now a new thing that I do. I worry about that. Um, Yeah. Look at us. Look how we've changed. I know. How about having your son? That's got to add like a wonderful, super complex aspect to it. How's the big guy? I before you, I swear to God, he's like a little local legend in his own right. Like he will have a blue check next to his name one day. Your son. Before pretty, I do, for yeah. sure. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the the way things are going, he'll have it before I do. He um. He is doing the virtual school thing. It's funny that you say that because right before the pandemic, we, uh, we had him in karate and we were leaving karate class one day and this grandma started yelling, Hey, I know you and chasing him like running out because he we know we teach him stranger danger so he's running in the opposite direction and she's chasing i know you i know you and my husband jumped in and like intercepted and he goes where do you know from where where do you know him from and she said from instagram and he was like lady you he's a child (laughs) you don't know him because you've seen a video or some pictures of him and she went oh i just wanted to meet him in person and elson was like what the fuck is going on right now he was so so we had to have a conversation about that but that's happened a few times um and it definitely makes me question whether i overshare but Mm. when i start to question my oversharing he then goes and does something and he'll go you should post that uh-huh. And I'm like, you don't you really don't care i don't care you should post that he's like now he gets it he's yeah i was gonna ask you how you navigate that with the kids and because i know everybody handles it a little bit differently and i was talking i interviewed toast recently and we were talking about you i was like dina just has a way of being able to navigate that social media world where and I think you could definitely add influencer to your list of titles now and content creator. So how the hell do you do it all and stay sane? I mean, he's a big reason. I, years ago, before Instagram was even popular, um, I was posting quotes and things that my kid was saying. He was probably two, three years old. And I was posting, you know, you know all the the memes you see now that's like, him, me, him, me, that have that just like break down a conversation. Uh-huh. So I've been doing that for a long time. I just didn't know. I never had the time to figure out how to construct that into like meme form, you know? And I never really wanted to, to be honest with you, but uh, pandemic hitting, giving me that free time, sitting in my closet, talking to a wall, trying to do a radio show, kind of made me feel like, maybe there's something else out there for me to express myself creatively. And so, um, yeah, I started posting some memes and got picked up by some 
pu different publications were reposting my my things Chive here and, there. and all sorts of shit yeah chive and scary mommy and the today mm -hmm. show and and you know once that happens then you see like the other meme makers or people it's just it's so weird how it just snowballs and then so then that happens and then you gain respect like whatever respect means yeah. anymore but you get respect mm -hmm. and then people start following your stuff and commenting on your stuff and dming you and teaching you things and um it's kind of cool like that the, the i always thought that it was really stupid always thought it was really stupid mm. but i have learned more in the past couple of months from people reaching out genuinely just trying to be helpful than i have in the longest which is pretty crazy that's awesome and that should tell you yeah. something though you are not an accident everything that happens from you is a result of hard work and that's what people i think notice and why they want to help because if you were like a fraud or somebody out there trying to just kind of oh, maybe i can like with minimal effort, put something out and get a ton of credit for it. And you know, like a lot of people try and do nowadays, but you don't cut any corners. And I notice that you put in the work and you try and do it right, which is, I mean, a lot more than you can say for a lot of people nowadays. Because when it comes to social media, it is like such a crapshoot, you know, you never know how people are gonna take what you post. But if you're sitting there worried about what everybody's thinking every time you post mm -hmm. something, that's when you get in trouble. Yeah, if you, everybody agrees with everything you say, then right. there's something you're not doing right. Then you're so. you're way too vanilla, and no, and you're not making an impact one way or another. So you're gonna people are going to you're you're either gonna be someone's shot of whiskey or you're not, and that's the bottom line. So you can you can like work yourself up over it, and you can second guess everything that you do and talk yourself out of doing some really funny shit which i have done i mean i've been to that point where i'm like that would be so funny and i put the whole thing together and then i talk myself out of it mm -hmm. and it would have worked it could have worked and then somebody else is going to go and do it and it could be huge for them and you're going to kick yourself for it so it's i would rather take the risk and then i, I don't want to say ask for forgiveness but i mean take the risk and take the hit lose the followers, whatever it is, be true to myself. If I feel so strongly that something is funny or that something's going to resonate. I like that. Okay. Well, I wanted to really quick before we went any further, I want to talk about like, you have this super dope new company called emotional support threads. And uh, I wanted you to, while you guys are listening, go ahead and check out emotional support threads.com. Right. While we're getting into it, you can take a gander, tell yeah. everybody about emotional support threads. So emotional support threads was a concept that started, we were working at home. We were all, you know, what happened, pandemic hit, and they went, everyone just stay home. Um, don't bring your cooties here. So I was working out of my closet and I am a very deep feeler. And so not having people to engage with on a daily basis, and you know, I mean, at the, at, at the radio station, you have people just popping in and saying hi, and that could be enough for you that could be enough interaction for me. Just the day to day. The hey, familiarity. With anything. And I was not getting any of that. And my husband was out. He was working. My son was, um, I think it was over the summer. Yeah, it was over the summer. So he was literally just sitting at home waiting for me to finish working all day long. Like, are you done yet? Are you done yet? Every single time I did a break. <laughs> and the anxiety and the, are we going to contract coronavirus? And I had friends and family members who were contracting it and it was just crazy. And so I had to find an, an outlet. I had to find something to make myself happy. Um, and I didn't know what that was. And I was out walking because you remember the beginning of the pandemic. That's all anyone would do mm -hmm. for our daily walk. Yeah, maybe a bike outside. ride if you're lucky. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Get the fresh air. So we, I was out and I was walking with my son and people were, it was before we knew even like what type of mask you were supposed to wear um, or what any of the rules were, how close you could get. And everything was just kind of up in the air. And so people were walking really close to us. On every day we go for these walks and people would just be in our space God. on the sidewalk. And one night 
because I totally stopped sleeping. That wasn't even a thing for me anymore. Mm -hmm. um, one night I'm up, it's the middle of the night, I'm laying in bed and I'm messaging with my friend, Crystal. She's in Austin and I haven't seen her in person in probably a decade, uh, but she's a graphic designer and she and I have the same warped sense of humor. And she was dealing with the same exact thing in Austin, Texas that I was dealing with here of like, get away from my kids, get out of my space. We don't know what coronavirus is. You are creeping me out and my yeah. anxiety is through the roof. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So we're both going through that. And I said, you know, I swear, I'm just going to have you make me a shirt that says, yo, back up, but we're going to have it in like pretty font. So people can't get super offended, not aggressive, pretty. And then, but it's going to say, yo, back up. So they know to get the hell away from me and away from my kid. And she mocked it up just as a joke. Uh, she mocked it up and I said, I'm going to order it. If you put it up on a site, I'm going to order it. I'm going to order one for me, one for you. We'll have these shirts. It'll be great. And that whole thing just snowballed into love it. the concept of having clothing and mugs and tote bags and hats that can be your emotional support animal in, in a sense, you know, where That's they're a good speaking idea. for you and they're expressing, like we, we have a kid's line because kids are dealing with so much anxiety right now. And between the two of us, Crystal and I have three little boys. And so we kind of talk to them and how are you feeling? And we mm. made a shirt that is a uh, scared candy corn for Halloween. And nice. we sold so many of them because kids were all resonating with that. And we have, um, just all kinds of little like emotional creatures that we've made for holiday shirts and things for kids. But it, we're realizing that this is more than just like a mom thing. We thought at first it was just a anxious mom thing. Mm. And we're getting so many orders from guys and from, you know, people ordering shirts for their grandparents. We have one that says, um, I'm just resting my eyes and people are ordering those for like, you know, for, for Thanksgiving to give to the grandparents. I'm ordering that tomorrow. That's, I love that. I love and that. So it's fun. Like it's fun to see that this thing that we started that was initially just for the two of us. And once I, you know, when I lost my job, it having that, while I knew this wasn't going to be, this wasn't going to supplement a full-time income by any means, but having that, the creative release, having the ability to, okay, well now I can refocus my time and I can work on this. Um, and then also having, I mean, the community and all of our, the radio community has been amazing. All of my friends that I've made over the period of time that I've been doing this, everyone, you included, everyone's reached out and been like, I like it. I'm feeling it. It's yeah. good. Let's yeah. talk about it. Let, yeah. Like, let me tell people, how can I help? And there isn't a single person who hasn't said, how can I help? That's Which awesome. Mind blowing. Wow. Mind -blowing. That's beautiful. Like, and yeah. you really, that was a, a beautiful transition. Like you said, like after losing a job and what a shit situation that is, maybe we'll get in that a little bit, but like you never stopped hustling. So kudos to you on that. I know you're going to keep growing this thing into a beast. Uh, I'm calling it now, yeah. like for I hope sure. So. I mean, no, it, it's would, it would definitely be nice to be able to make this, to, to have this thing, you know, uh, especially knowing that it's like it, where, where it all started, I think is, is super special and it would be nice to be able to make it a full-time thing. Um, and we don't have, you know, we don't have so many people have, I think every successful business has a business plan or they know where they're going. We, it's been two months and yeah. we have spent two months frantically trying to figure out how to do web design and operate a business and take payments and track down shipments and You're wearing all these different hats. I've learned a lot more in two months than I have in two decades, probably. Yeah. And it's been really cool. My husband said he's never seen me more engaged. Like he, he, he said, I've never seen you more alive. That just is awesome learning it's just firing in your brain and Staying it's non-stop yeah yeah but i think the comedy world like you you know you uh, with your relationship with the comedy world i think that's kind of the same thing mm. um in a certain respect and i've always said to you you're always like oh my god you know you're you're such a big fan of comedy and and stand up and i've always said I'm such a fan and I love to admire it from afar because to me, there's nothing more terrifying oh. to me. It's the ultimate, the ultimate to get up on a stage and just 
pour yourself out mm. to people and have no idea what the response is going to be. I am a total chicken shit. I love I writing that. comedy. I, I am. I love writing comedy, but I, I know my strengths and weaknesses and I know mm. I would not be able to handle if I poured everything into to something, put it out there and was like this waiting for a response and did not get a thing. Uh, I think I would not be able to handle that, <laughs> uh, which is why I've always been enamored with that business. I mean, yeah. we've been around rock stars all of our careers and I don't geek out over rock stars. I, I know. Isn't that funny? I geek out over people who successfully are able to have long-term stand-up comedy careers. I think that's amazing. I'm the same way. You know, I, I always thought it the, the same because it's like, like you said, going up there with everybody looking back at you like, all right, what now, bitch? You go out there and think, oh, I'm going to, it's like, you're just expecting there to be kind of like a laugh track. You get out there and it's all on you to make people in real time react. And you know how it is being, there is a comfort to being in a studio behind a mic you have control, you have, and, and it's such like an out of control sort of thing where yeah. I, uh, I only did it once, but Steve Byrne asked me, I, I was interviewing him and he's like, uh, I told him I was about to do one at the beginning of the pandemic at a comedy show I was putting on, but it got canceled. And he's like, well, that just means you're gonna have to open up for me this weekend. And I was like, what? And I talked, I tried to talk myself out of that shit for three days straight. I'm like, I don't know. I, it's remembering the, it's remembering everything and not just, especially going up for the first time and not having it the all logged in, all the timing, the rhythm and like, we yeah. know, you know, so, but going up there and doing, I'm so happy that I did like just for the story and be able to say that I did, I don't know if I want to again, cause I respect them so much that out of respect for them, I'm like, I'm not going to try and do this as a career because I know what hard work it is and to, like sign up for another decade of just grinding like that. And we've already done that in the radio career. So it's like, ah, uh, to sign up for another thing like that, but so much respect for the comedians out there. I totally agree. Yeah. Totally and agree. I, and, and, and for me, I've always been someone who's admired that from afar and I've always loved, I love a good tweet. I love a good meme. I mm. love that. So, so that's kind of how I'm satisfying uh my urge to entertain people without being on the radio is you know putting these snarky shirts together and selling these snarky mugs and tweeting snarky shit and making snarky memes you know i i didn't and not until recently was that an option you know not not until the what past like three five years could you do something like that and stand a chance at making a living I mean, you were just a clown on the internet mm -hmm. before. But now, <laughs> yeah. if you you know, if you resonate with the right brands, if you resonate with the right people, like you, you can really, you can really showcase what you're capable of, and you can really make a career for yourself, which is so insane. But it's also such a relief because these people who would never be noticed otherwise, and who would you know weren't connected and didn't have an in, um, can get discovered now. That's which so, I think is awesome. Yeah, that is really cool. I want to pick your brain a little bit about that because I know there's some stuff that I can learn from you because this podcast has kind of been uh, the same for me, just having some sort of outlet, you know, and being able to get some stuff out there, being able to mix it up, crack some jokes or whatever. But I wanted to, just to catch some people up briefly who don't know, I wanted to cover some of your bullet points, just, just to give them some more context of like your career and where you came from. So you're a Coral Springs girl. You went to MSD, right? I did. I went to Douglas. Okay. And I graduated from Douglas and I uh, had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. And my mom said, well, I'm not, she was a single mom. And she said, I am not going to work my ass off to send you to college. If you have no reason to be there until you figure out what you want to do and you have direction, you're not aimlessly eating up my bank account. Wise so, woman. Uh, yeah. And, and I watched all of my other friends, parents say, you're going, whether you know what you want to do or not. So they all had the exact opposite and they all shipped off and went to college and I stuck around and I just worked, you know, I worked a mall job. I was working at a hotel 
and um, I was working the late night shift at a hotel in Parkland. And, um, and I remember driving home from, from work one night and I heard a commercial for Connecticut School of Broadcasting, which I, you went to, right? Wall of Fame buddies, what up, what yeah. up? <laughs> so I heard a commercial for a Connecticut school and I got home and I remember telling my mom, I think I could do this. I, I love music and I love the only thing I like about this job that I have right now is checking in strangers and hearing their stories and hearing about their day. That's mm. the only redeeming quality about this job that I have. And my mom said, all right, well, we'll go check it out. We'll see if it's right for you. And I loved it. And um, it kind of, things just kind of went from there. I, I, after I graduated, I ended up picking up an internship at Y100. Okay, because I was going to ask you, I know you worked at Clear Channel, now iHeart, and I interned for Paul and Ron. Who did you intern for? When I was at Y100, I interned for the night show. So there were, there were, they were different buildings at the time. Wow, they had interns for the night show. Yeah. Oh my God. Wow. Yeah. It was like everybody had an intern. It oh, was crazy. What? Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh my everybody God. Made a I'm ton like, what? Everyone made a ton of money. People paid cash for stuff. It was like, <laughs> Oh, totally the good old days. Um, but yeah, so I interned at the, on the night show and ended up when my internship was just about over, um, the, the guy that I was interning for within about the first week or two, he had me on air with him doing bits and stuff. And I just became part of the show and he went to bat for me and he fought for me to get hired and I got hired and nice. um, we, we went from there. But that is awesome. It's been a long, yeah, it's been a long Not, journey. Ninety-seven point nine. <laughs> it was ninety-seven point nine, right in the morning show. Yeah, so Beach. I went from Y one hundred to um, the uh, the guy that I was on air with at Y one hundred. Unfortunately, ended up with brain cancer, oh, um, wow. and so they said we want to retain you as an employee, but we have to put somebody else on air. I was like 19 at the time. They didn't know what to do with me. So they had me doing database, like data entry stuff and promotions. Mm -hmm. So I was doing promotions and data entry stuff, just kind of waiting to see if anything would open up anywhere. And I ended up, um, uh, there was an opening at Zeta at 94.9 Zeta yeah, and I went for it and I got it. And, um, and I was there until Zeta flipped. Mm. And, uh, and then I ended up going to coast, which is now hits and doing mornings there with Julie guy. And that was oh, very, that's right. you yeah, that was Julie. super short lived. And then from there, I went to RMF in West Palm and was there okay. for nine years and then came back for shark. That's where so you I, met John, right? John O'Connell. Yeah. Up in well, Palm when, beach. Well, we didn't actually like, we, we didn't get to actually ever really talk because it was always at events. So we met and we knew each other and knew of each other, but we never really had a chance to like really, really talk. Um, okay. So how does the shark come about then? So the shark came about, I was in the middle of negotiating a different position in West Palm for a different radio station. And that was taking a really, really, really long time. Mm -hmm. And a friend of mine, it was like a long time. And um, a, a friend of mine, she, uh, she called and she was like, hey, listen, I really feel like there's a, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of change at Entercom and they have a new GM and I've heard a lot of good things about him. And I think you should reach out and introduce yourself. And I said, but there's no station there that's for me. They had light and magic and a sports station and like there's nowhere that I would fit in. So what's the point? And she said, just reach out, introduce yourself. Um, so I reached out and a couple minutes later, I got a LinkedIn notification saying that he was looking at my LinkedIn page. And then I got a couple minutes later, an email back saying, I want to meet with you. When can you come meet with me? Um, and I did not know until after I signed my contract, what the format of the radio station was. Wow. Um, okay. I, I took the job based upon the day part because it was important to me to do middays. Yeah. I, that was the only day part that I could have done. I was a single mom at the time. So he said, you know, what day part would you want? And I said, I've got to do middays. He said, all right, done. Um, and I heard that John O'Connell was programming it. And so those two things were 
definitely the thing, you know, definitely what pushed me to, to take the job. And I'm so glad I did. Oh. I, mean, I, met, I met my husband and I got yeah. to move back home and be near my family. So it's been, well, it's been great. You were the best of us at the shark. And I, just in my humble opinion, no shade on anybody else. I think that they probably agree with me, but you were the best of us. I always enjoyed listening to you. I thought that you were always so strong on the air. And I appreciated when I got there, I was like, you were very cool. Gave me your number. Said, don't hesitate. You need anything. Let me know. Not everybody is like that, you know, and like we were fortunate to be in a building with lots of really cool people. Of course, there's a, you always have a few sociopaths running around. You have to just steer clear from, but for the most part, everybody's super dope. And uh, I was always really uh, appreciative that you were nice when I started there. And um, I mean, Will, I got to give it to Holiday actually, because before I started working on the air, like jockeying for, for Intercom, I was just kind of bopping around doing news. I started at Intercom filling in for Evelyn Curry with Julie Guy on the morning show. And I was just kind of, you know, trying to figure out my place because I yeah. used to work at iHeart. And, uh, you know, coming over to Entercom, just like you said, just kind of waiting for something to open up. And Holiday came up to me one day and he's like, you got a pretty good voice. Like, Maybe you should, you want to come on the chart, like put something together, an air check for John. And I did. John got me on air and um, was there for a little while. And then Will comes to the shark. He sees me like on the weekends grinding and coming in when I can, uh, whenever I can get a shift. And Will's like, why don't you? Why don't you put something together? We'll try and get you on the shark. I can't tell you how fucking pumped I was when he said that because being in that building, I wanted to be on the shark from the jump, but I was like, I don't know, like if there's any openings there, if I'll find a spot. So when it did, I was so pumped. And out of all the jobs that I've had, that was by far my favorite. I mean, all those riptide experiences. I mean, those yeah. are like life highlights for sure for me meeting and introducing bands that panic at the disco intro with all the blue lights against like the ocean moonlit ocean behind it in Fort Lauderdale Beach it's like woo! like those were some amazing huge experiences and uh you know we got to kind of experience them all as like a little work family whether I was close to everybody or not like you said that familiarity uh, of the little work family and even if you just run into somebody for a little bit it's like comforting to know that yeah. like you know dina's there holidays there whatever so oh i was gonna say what is happening <laughs> you just lost your light my light went out i'm sorry <laughs> i was it's like you don't even an earth if there's an earthquake at your house that means it's coming to me pretty quick this is what I get. I bought cheap Amazon shit. So it's probably mm -hmm. going to go out again. I'm just giving you a heads up on that one. But that's anyway, okay. that's all good. But yeah, those yeah, were no, it was, it was, it was definitely, it, it was a, I think a once in a lifetime kind of environment and it sucks that it was over so quickly, but I think, you know, we all got a chance to learn from each other and we all got a chance to, to do a lot. Of Don't worry about stuff. the light. I see you. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Well, hopefully my return window is still open on that piece of shit. Yeah, um, I, I know. I, I think everybody's going through with that Amazon. I have a friend who works at UPS and it's like, all we have is just Amazon returns, returns. all fucking day, all day. <laughs> Amazon returns, Amazon returns all fucking day. They, they played themselves. They give you like such a huge window to return stuff. So they did it to themselves and they can <laughs> afford it. I don't feel sorry for them. Yeah, but uh, okay. So to anybody who doesn't know, Due to a myriad of unfortunate circumstances, you know, out of our control, mainly COVID-19, Dina and I lost our jobs, along with so many of our friends in the radio industry. Radio took a big hit during the Rona. It was, the writing was on the wall, but I feel like it accelerated it, like, at least, like, a decade. Uh, yeah, you know, for sure. Just because there were people, I mean, the fact that the dust hasn't even begun to fall, so it's hard to tell whether we'll be able to recover or not, let alone fully. Definitely not to its former glory, but just um, you have all these huge personalities in this building got broken up. Even the ones left in the building are kind of walking like barren hallways. And uh, it's just been so weird not seeing everybody around. 
uh, like I said, like whether you're close with them or not, like just their presence is kind of oddly comforting, like a little work family thing going on. So not walking down those halls to see you holiday, like Darlene Evans, like Joe Rose. I got to say, I was let go in the beginning, that first uh, big, well, it wasn't the first, but it was like the second or third big wave. And I was like, man, this is, this is not good. This is not going in a good direction. But when they let you and Darlene Evans go, I was like, I don't, it's done. Who's on the radio if they're not on the radio? Like, because you (laughs) you guys, uh, like I said, you were the best of us at the shark in my humble opinion, but you were up there with the rest of the talent at Intercom, uh, up there with Darlene Evans. And like, I, she's just like a local fucking legend, been on Kiss for like 30, 35 years. So it's just been like this weird bummer of an adjustment lots of those in 2020 Mm -hmm. but i've been trying to stay grateful keep grinding so it always makes me happy to see you out there grinding making things happy not letting any of this bullshit keep you down it's not like an easy thing to do no no shade on anybody who's going through a tough time i can completely empathize uh it's just more props to you uh for finding a way to make uh lemons out of lemonade you know i see you out there hustling and i appreciate that lang i appreciate that I'm not someone who can sit still very easily. <laughs> so <laughs> I will sometimes I, I will uh, I, I get I get bored and I need creative outlets. For me, that's creating is therapy. Um, it's it's where all my content comes from. It's where, you know, the shirts came from. If I'm not creating something, I know I'm in a bad place. And I, uh, I think for any of us, any of us in this industry, I think that that's really important. But I, I also think that radio, one thing that radio did do was it, it forced us to learn and maybe not learn well. And I think that's the part of the problem. And I think that's where a lot of people who find themselves in the position that we're in now where they're out of work. Um, we were forced to do so many things and wear so many hats. It's just part of our, you know, day to day, but not really given the tools or the training to know how to do any of them very well. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. So I, I think that's a benefit and also a detriment. And I think the benefit is you, you've already, you've already dabbled your toes in the water. Mm-hmm. So now it's up to you. You're, you know, cashing your unemployment checks, whatever position you're in you know a little bit about how to do this because you were forced to do this, right? Yes. So whether it is content creating, YouTube, you know, you, a YouTube channel or going out in sales and getting a job in sales. I mean, there's so many things that we have in us that you don't even realize you have in you until you're forced to sit down and actually reflect. Um, it's a shame, you know, the, the bad end of it is that it's a shame that, the focus was kind of lost on, on, on arming your talent and giving them the tools that they mm. need to really succeed. It was just kind of like, do it. We know you're supposed to do it. Just <laughs> figure it out and just do it. Um, I was kind of so, surprised by that when I was sorry to go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So it's no, true, it's though. sad. It's sad for the people who are still employed, who are expected to do these things and are not being given the tools um and then it, it's sad for the people who are depending on those people so you've got it's a trickle down because you have your talent who okay well go make this commercial with your phone figure it out edit it up give it to the salesperson it wasn't done well enough the salesperson suffers the company suffers the 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 brand that's given you know your company money mm is now not getting what they were promised because and it all trickles back to us not being armed with the the appropriate tools or given the right education on how to do these things because it's just so much you're thrown to the wolves to to figure it out yeah right so you know i have been fortunate in the past i've worked for companies who would invest in in that sort of thing. But right now with the state of the entertainment industry as a whole, I don't think that's something that they can invest in. I don't Mm. think that that's, it's, it's, it's gotta be hard to still have a job in radio right now because you, um, unless you're going to further your education 
on your own, which you certainly can do. Mm-hmm. And I, all of my friends who are still employed, I'm yeah. every time we have a conversation, I'm like, let me help you. Let me yeah. teach you how to create a good Instagram story or a poll or whatever. Like these little things will add up and they will build your value. And like, let's, let's do this stuff. And the more information you have, the better, you know, I stay up at night and I'm, and I've been doing it for years. I'm up at night going, Snapchat, really? Do I have to do this? TikTok, (laughs) really? Do I have to do this? Like you have to pick your battles when it comes to what platforms you really invest in. Um, But it's necessary. You can't survive without it being in the entertainment industry in any way, shape or form. That's your identity. A resume is not a thing anymore. You're Um, so right about that. I need to get better at that. Like I said, I need to pick your brain about that and find out better. I'm happy to help. That's like, that's one but of those it's, it's, it's just constant. I mean, I'll, if I don't know how to do something, I'll watch a, you, there are a bazillion 12 year olds on YouTube who know how to do these things. <laughs> it's so right. Tutorials. I've learned from everything I've learned is from a teenager. Posting I'm telling you YouTube, it's like this huge resource. I would be in the editing room doing things on Adobe and I'd have engineers in the other room. I'm like, I could just like YouTube this shit in like three yep. minutes. I know how to use it. Same thing, everything in my life, YouTube it, just YouTube it, find it out. But um, I wanted to ask you with all that talent, where are you at with radio right now? Are you, try, are you content just creating the, and carving out these new paths for yourself and seeing where it goes? Or do you even want to try and get back into radio again? You want to do it in podcast form? Yeah. What do you think? Everyone's asking me that. Everyone's asking me that. I because um, you got a lot, so much fucking talent behind the mic, Dina. Like it's kind of like Jordan without a basketball hoop. It's like what the fuck is going no on? No one will ever that my heart is my heart just stopped beating. You can't compare me to Michael Jordan. I could do whatever the fuck I want on my show. This is my show. No, but that's like a let's make compare you to D Wade. Let's like D Wade. He oh doesn't have God. his basketball hoop. Come on. You just knocked the breath out of me. Um. Good. So I'm in a place right now where uh, it's it's interesting. So the offers that I've received are predominantly the ones that pay well would all require a move, mm. um, relocating my family and my kids in third grade and he and his whole family's here. So as much as, I mean, I'm not like locked to Florida for life, but I don't want to really shake him up more than he's already been with the pandemic and everything. Mm. Um, so I, I'm not willing to move right now. Um, I'm not saying that I wouldn't at mm. all if the right opportunity presented itself, but nothing has been, uh, ap- nothing's been appetizing enough for me to uproot, uproot my entire family and move. And then the other thing is, is um, voice tracking. So everybody comes at you and says, well, we voice track. And to be completely honest with you, I mean, you know what voice tracking pays. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what it's I said that it's is, at least a uh, half of what you would normally be making if you're lucky. Sorry, go ahead. For yeah, anybody no, who I doesn't mean, know, a, a full time voice tracking gig, to put it in perspective, what I would make per month voice tracking, doing social media for the radio station, all of that, I could post, I could come up with two pieces of solid content for brands and post them on Instagram and get paid exactly what I would working full time Mm. for a radio station for an entire month's worth of work. And I had to eliminate that option, um, completely. Mm. So voice tracking, um, the convenience isn't worth, uh, I I get it. I get it. it. It's just, I could work hard. I mean, I can work harder on other things. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's so awesome, by the way, that you could do that. And you've got, like, again, content creator and influencer. It's so funny because, like you said, a lot of people on first uh, observation, they're like, influencer, content creator, like, right, like who, who, who do I think I am? Like, you know, but it, it, you really do it so well. And uh, like I said, it's by no accident. Like, it's all warranted. So just like huge props to you for being able to navigate this whole shit situation and find a good way to come out of it. I think it's really dope what you're doing. Yeah, but as as far as like what the future would hold for me in radio, I'm not, 
I'll, I'll never say no. And that was one thing that I went into this. It's been two months since I lost my job. And I told my husband in the very beginning of it all, I'm going to say yes to everything to a point. Mm. If I realize it's detrimental in some way, shape or form, I'll bail, but I'm going to say yes to everything. I'm going to entertain everything. And so far that has not come back to bite me. There have been projects that I start and then I say, oh, this is not what I was promised or this is not what I thought it was going to be. And I just, just gracefully back out mm -hmm. and people have to understand. Um, but I, I'm kind of going with that Jim Carrey, yes, man. <laughs> I was just <laughs> going to say, I just watched that last week. Oh, yeah. shit. Uh, I, and I would, and I, I just talked to, um, to one of my friends who's out of work. He was just part of the whole iHeart um, mm -hmm. series of casualties. And he's in Arizona and he, uh, he said, what do you think I should do? And I said, I, I would recommend to anyone who's in a position where they don't know what they want to do or don't have a direction, say yes to everything. If it yeah. starts, if it's, if it's turns out that it's something that is negative, that's negatively impacting you in Back any up. way, yeah. leave, yeah. but just say yes and be open to the, the possibility of what it could be. There are so many things that I've gotten myself um, involved in, in the past couple of months that have turned out to be fun and I've surprised myself or I've learned something and one thing can always lead to another. And that's just kind of where I'm at right now. I mean, I, I'll entertain anything. I'm, I'm, I'm in a good place there. And if anything, I can leave with some knowledge or some new connections, you know? I love it. Yeah. I love it. That's great. Um, great way to kind of wrap that up because I had a couple things that I wanted to talk to you about before I get out of here. Actually, you know what we'll do? We're going to do something called Hater Hall of Fame. Okay, so I like to keep things positive on the podcast, especially during the pandy and whatnot. But, but part of the way you do that is by exercising that negativity in a healthy way. It's going to come out one way or another. Okay. So it's all about finding the best way to do it. So I like to try and, uh, and, and it's all about feeling better afterwards. This isn't like true hate. This is so you could feel better. It's like an exorcism. Yes. So I like to provide a healthy platform for my guests to express their hate. We do something here called Hater Hall of Fame. I hate you guys. I hate you. I don't even know you. I hate you. You're tacky and I hate you. What's pissing you off today, Lang? Uh, it could be anything. It could be something to do with you, the world, people in general. What, okay, what well, doing? what's pissing me off today is has been pissing me off since the beginning of the school year. Uh, the fact that my child cannot physically be in school um, and what that's doing to him uh, mm. emotionally and what that's doing to, uh, I mean, like, productivity is down in the household and sanity is down in the household and he needs to be able to be around his friends and um but he also needs to be safe so the frustration of that is real that is something that on an hourly basis i stop down and i want to punch a hole in the wall yeah that's a lot of parents going through that right now i mean i give you guys mad props because that's a whole other level of patience and understanding that I think like I can wrap my head around, but until you actually go through it, uh, that's, I have respect for that because I'm like, damn, um, it's something that obviously very rewarding, something that I look forward to hopefully doing one day, but by God, going through that during this whole pandemic, like kudos up the wazoo for that. Cause I just, I, I don't know how the hell you guys do it. I mean, stuck. In we don't know how we do there. it. Yeah. We drink. With, uh, like yeah. We drink. <laughs> Yeah, we drink. As soon as that's, we can. That's how we do it. We drink. Right. <laughs> I love it. All right. We got the mental reps questionnaire. Pop quiz, hot shot. Why so serious? What's in the intro? What does Marcellus Wallace look like? What do you mean funny? Funny how? How am I funny? Answer the question, Claire. Are you telling me you built a time machine out of a DeLorean? You want answers. I want the truth. You can't. The truth is Darth Vader, my father. For real, be I want answers without a good question. A good answer has no place to go. It's time for the mental reps questionnaire. All right, 
Take as long as you need, but don't overthink it. It's kind of a lightning round of sorts. Oh, okay, good. I like a lightning round. If you could meet anyone, current or historical, and spend the day picking their brain, who would it be? Oh my God. I have two answers. Okay. All right. And they're, they're both so lame, but I'm <laughs> going uh, Tom Hanks and Dave Grohl. Good call. Okay. I mean, I mean I there's even... nothing deep. I'm not like, it's honestly, I didn't, yeah. Those are like self-explanatory. I totally understand. I want to hang out with both of them for a full day. Those Together are... or separately, I don't care, but I would like that to happen. Good call. Sure. Good call. I like that. If you had a, a round trip ticket in a time machine, when and where would you go? 80s. I want to go back to the eighties. Okay. I want to go back to where like I could play outside and it was safe and I could ride my bike to my friend's house or ride my bike two miles to school while I'm in third grade. Could you imagine? Oh my God. I would be such a lunatic parent. Walk five feet from the front door. Eight. But I want to go back to the eighties. I want to go back to like, yeah, maybe even stranger things ish time. That, just where you can jump on your bike and you can feel free and you can go to, Spend your allowance on bullshit candy and cookies yeah. at the store and your parents don't know where the hell you are because they're working. <laughs> yeah. That I want to go back to. And then you can watch Saturday morning cartoons and eat your cereal and be left alone. I want that. Good two for, like, for two so far. Good answers. If yeah. you could have one superpower, what would it be? Ooh. I should say healing powers. <laughs> hmm. I, invisibility. I think invisibility. What would healing, you do? Healing though? powers. That's the right, the right answer. And ultimately, if I really sat and thought about it, I would end up saying, saying healing powers. But I would go invisibility. Okay. But what would you be doing with that invisibility? See, that's where it all comes. Are you going to be you've seen that for good are you gonna be a creep what are you doing while you're invisible? whatever the hell i feel like doing on that, on that particular day Copy i might that. stop bank robberies i might infiltrate government offices i don't you might know. do a bank robbery yourself i might feel like getting some f- clothes and going to anthropology and f- just running out the door i don't know whatever i don't know good whatever God. i want to do that day i'm doing and i can do it because no one can stop me do you believe in ghosts Explain. I believe in signs. I don't believe in ghosts, mm. but I believe that things very, very cl- are put in front of you in a very clear and concise way when you need them. I believe that when people who mean a lot to you pass on, and I'm going to cry, um, when people who mean a lot to you pass on, I think that they have a way of presenting themselves to you when you need it the most. I agree, Lenny. I've always seen proof of that. Um, The day that my grandfather died, we walked out of the hospital and a yellow and black butterfly flew right in front of my face. I was walking with my mom, flew right in front of her face. And since then, and that was probably 20 years ago, since, no, it was like 18 years ago, probably. Since then, I've had so many moments where I'm like, this is it. I'm giving up on fill in the blank, whatever it is, and a yellow and black butterfly right in front of my face. And I know butterflies are everywhere in South Florida. I love it, Lane. the timing of all of it is, I feel like those things happen for a reason. Could not agree more. Uh, What's, what was the first concert you ever attended? Counting Crows. That's right. I knew that answer. Yeah, you knew that. I've talked to you. uh, I've talked to everyone who will listen about Counting Crows. That's I went to Counting funny. Crows at the Edge in Fort Lauderdale, which is now Revolution the Live. Which edge. Is, oh my which God. Which is Revolution. where I got married. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> because that venue meant so much to me and my husband. Um, but yeah, that was my first show. We waited outside Sears at the Ticketmaster ticket window. Oh my God. Broward, the uh, Broward Mall? At the Coral Square Mall. Okay. We All right, you were Coral Springs. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Sears, the ticket window. <laughs> and we waited on a very long line. I think it was, no, that was for my next show. That was for the next show. Because I think they only sold tickets for the little shows at, at Revolution. The edge, or right? the Edge, so yeah. We, so then, yes, we bought the tickets there. But my, it, like, that began my, immediately after I saw that show, I was like, who's coming next? 
I don't care who it is. Let's go. I want to go to every live show I can go to. And I think I went from Counting Crows to Danzig. I saw Danzig wow. was my second <laughs> show. Um, Pantera. Then we saw Corn and Manson. And like, just, I would go to any live show for a band that I just even remotely was into. And I just couldn't get enough of all of it. I it's love such a bummer it. that nobody's getting to experience this right now. Uh, no. I know. I'm just like hoping that we get it back like as soon as possible. Were well, you they're saying that they're going to like COVID test everyone, which I don't know how the hell they're going to do that. Yeah, that'd have to be a really fast test. And like one of those 15 minute ones, you put people in a holding room or something. But I, I was talking to Toast. Uh, were you at the Orange Bowl 1999 Metallica, Creed, Kid Rock and Seven Dust? You weren't there? Okay, because I I talked to Toast about that. He was actually covering it for Zeta. And I was like, that's the first time that anybody offered me weed. This guy gives me like a bowl. He's like, you want to smoke? I was looking at it like, what the fuck is that? I was like, this grew up this little Christian boy. I'm like not even allowed to watch Scooby-Doo. And I go to a Metallica concert and this guy's like, "Uh, you want to smoke this shit? I was like, "Uh, no, man, I'm good. I'm good, but I always remember that hey, being. Look at you now. Look at you now. <laughs> I know how times have changed. Okay, uh, what's next? What's your favorite movie? Oh. And then tell me your real favorite movie, like uh, well, Rachel on Friends. <laughs> I can watch. Um, I can watch Shawshank Redemption over and over and over and over and over again. And I could do pick friend. it up wherever. Yeah, I love it. But I also love, like, I can watch any of the Hunger Games movies. Really? Um, yeah. I, I, I can watch Con Air. Like, any of the, oh, those. those <laughs> Con movies. Air? Dina. Rock, Con Air, any of those. I, I like those. But Shawshank is one that I can, I will always watch if it's on. Crawl through sure. River of Shit and came out clean on the other side. I love it. Good job. Oh, thank you. Uh, now... Let me see. In a world without radio, which is pretty much the world that we live in right now, what's your dream job? I asked this to everybody. I guess we already kind of covered this, but like, what would be your dream job? My dream job job would be to be able to expand upon what I'm doing now and incorporate. Like, I would love to be able to um, bring more of my friends into the fray and utilize there i have so many friends with amazing senses of humor who are super artistically talented who have awesome business acumen that i definitely don't have uh, my partner crystal is a badass with graphic artistry and web design and all that but the two of us between us we are so handicapped when it comes to any kind of business sense um but we have so many great friends who would would be awesome in that respect so I think just to be able to grow our business to a point where we can pay people what they're worth. Um, and that when we started, this was one of those things we're so used to in radio being asked to take less than what we're worth. Right. Um, or do this for me for free or do mm -hmm. it on trade, whatever it is. And when we started this, that was my, that was my one real sticking point. Um, is that anybody that we work with, uh, you know, we're the ones who started this whole thing. So if we have to take a hit, we'll take a hit. But anybody that we bring in or that we have to work with, we want to be able to compensate fairly. Um, so that's kind of a hope for me is I'd like to be able to bring in some some quality people to help us expand, but also be able to pay them really well. Um, that's a really and, good answer. I like that. Yeah, I, I think I, I think you learn so much from your 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 past. And that's something that we're, I, I kind of have PTSD about, you know, the, hey, do me a solid and I, I'll come back around. And, you know, we're asked to do so many favors <laughs> that never, that we never see come to fruition. We never, we never get the, and not that you should do things for the, for, you know, your end of the reward. However, it just happens so often. <laughs> where yeah, it's like, we're happy do to do it if we see it's going somewhere. Like, right. Yeah. Um, so I just, I, I would like to stop that cycle and I would like to really be able to, to be the person to say, I want to work with you and here's what I have to offer you and here's what you're going to get. And, um, I'd feel good about that. That's, that's a big goal for me. 
I love it. Uh, tell me about somebody who changed your life for the better. My husband, I, well, that's really cliche, but he did. He, um, I, I've always been someone who f- feels things to my own detriment. I will absorb all of people's, and I think you and I have had this conversation, Aaron, who we worked with is another one. Um, we're empaths and I'm not the traditional empath because I'm so, um, aggressive and in your face and usually empaths are like, you know, they're mild mannered and they're just loving sweet people. And that's definitely not me. Uh, but I disagree with that. I am a, an emotion sponge and I will take in, you know, if you tell me that something is horrible in your life, I won't sleep that night because I'm trying to figure out a way to like, how can I help Ryan with his horrible Mm. thing that's going on? And my husband has really helped me put things in perspective and understand that I can continue to help, but I have to help within my means and I have to control my control. He said that on one of our first dates and I was like, freaking suit, control your controllables. (laughs) And I thought it was the dumbest thing. Yeah. Thought it was so stupid, and I, that Normie. pops into my head every time. Yeah, every time I'm about to commit myself to something that I know I, I I can't do because I want my heart wants to do it, but I know that I can't do it. I have to like reel it in, um, and he's really helped me put things in, into perspective and kind of wrangle, not giving my heart to everything, mm. um, which is which is definitely served me pro- you know properly because i do think that losing a job would have been much more of a catastrophic event in my life had i not learned how to put things into perspective mm. and had i not learned to go okay i can't control this if they you know they don't want me find people who want you and move on and like let's get on with it i love that you know? that's something it's like a weird thing that you it's a gift that you can give to yourself I would tell before I went into like an important meeting or something I'm like what's the worst that would happen like I don't work here anymore <laughs> like you, then you go and find like you gotta say things like that to yourself yeah perspective yeah. It's like dude these people they're just like you know so it's very I, I like that perspective and uh, I'm glad that he was able to to help you with that that's very cool last yeah. one if you have the world if you had the world's attention for 30 seconds what would you say Oh my God, wear your fucking mask so we can get, try to get back to life. I mean, be considerate of other people. Like really, what they teach you day one in preschool, there are so many grown ass adults who need a reminder of, which is literally just treat people the way that you would like to be treated and wear a fucking mask. That's it. I don't even need 30 seconds. I love it. What is that? Eight seconds? (laughs) Just, it doesn't, it's not going to hurt you to mind your own business and let people live their lives and just focus, focus on yourself and do what you got to do. Um, I'm just so sick of the, the pre- people are so like preachy and judgmental and like, if it doesn't affect you, shut the fuck up. No. That's it. I love it. How do you Sorry feel? Rant. You, no, yeah, that it, was beautiful. It triggered me. <laughs> did, did we? You feel like we covered everything? How you feel about it? You, you feel good? I'm good. Yeah, I told you this is your parade. I'm here. I'm on the float. Let's go. <laughs> I love. It. Do All right, you I feel got. Good? I feel great. I feel great. I got the quote of the week, and we'll wrap it up. It's uh, I, do you know Gary V. Gary Vaynerchuk? I do. Yeah. Okay, so he has this quote, and I love it. Perfectionism is insecurity with lipstick on. How yeah. great is that? We all have insecurities, but the trick is finding a way to navigate those fears without allowing them to shape your life. Uh-huh. And I think that you're a great example of somebody who's doing their damnedest to be like a self actualized human being and, and you're doing a damn fine job. At it. I love how you get after it. Keep, setting a good example for all the young women out there the young men as well and there i know there are a lot of people uh that love you and uh, want to support you and whatever you do thank so you. you're a good egg laying i thank nice. you for coming on appreciate you where can people you find you me on- michael jordan and a good egg <laughs> what a day what a day where can people find you on the socials and the youtubes and the websites so my personal is uh at it's dina lang 
uh, I could probably drop the at. It's it's Dina Lang, and my uh, my shop is Emotional Support Threads. I love it. Yep. All right, the deed is done. You're in the Mental Reps family now. Come back anytime, Dina. I miss you, pal. It's good to see I you. I know. I know. I'm so tired of Zooms. I know. Let's get over this fucking Zoom thing. When this finally is over, we all got to go out like We're as a group and like get some Back to like 30 seconds, fucking, right? Wear yeah. a fucking mask and like, let's get on with it. Let's, let's get, get over it. We all, we all need to go out and get some fucking drinks and, and really? uh, lament all over all this nonsense. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks for having me. Thank you for coming on, Lang. I appreciate you. And say hi to the fam and everybody. All right? I will. Take, Take care. care you. Bye. What's up? It's Dina Lang, formerly of Radio, but now with Emotional Support Threads. And you are hanging out with Ryan Wright and the Mental Reps Podcast. Keep your head on a swivel, bitches. I don't know what that means.